Well, folks, I had a pretty fun day out on the Stillaguamish River here in Western Washington uh, with Jeremy Souza. Met up with him. He's he actually is a new sprint boat racer. He bought uh, the old Fear Not machine, and he also is a mini boat fan. And so we met up via Facebook and uh, went for a nice little rip on the Stillaguamish River and maybe some tributaries that I'm not going to tell anybody where those were. It was pretty fun. Um, anyway, so today is back to work. I got the, the Honda Aquatax completely 100% dismantled, and here is the, the motor. I'm, I'm actually pretty... This thing had over 200 hours on it, and it is just super, super clean. Like, everything on it... There's just hardly any corrosion at all on it. I'm very happy with with this uh, with that jet ski find, and honestly, just everything about the ski. The oh, the hardest part of that whole teardown was getting that exhaust manifold off. Um, that was tough. the The wiring harness came out fairly fairly easy. It was nice that it actually had four screws that hold it in. So a lot, a lot of times there's clips or whatever kind of a weird bracket to hold those things in but that thing was pretty straightforward other than the exhaust manifold if i had to do it again i would it would take me half the time so uh lesson learned i guess so today i some like i think i said before somebody on facebook asked me hey are you worried about clearance issues with that honda motor and the pump so i refrained from gluing and 100 percent putting the pump in until I had a chance to fit the motor in there to see, just in case I had to raise the intake up a little bit if I was having clearance issue. So, this is what I did. I got the motor motor hanging here and on my engine stand. I did um, the, the bolts here that come from the UHMW. I actually thought about just tapping those and uh, putting the El Permanente thread lock on those and cutting those flush with the boat and just having the, on just those ones that are under the engine. I didn't wanna do that, but if I was having clearance on those bolts and the oil pan slash bottom of the engine, that's what I was going to do. However, when I put the engine in there, I saw that it lined up with the shaft. This is kind of just roughing it. Um, and I I had no clearance issues. I was, um, oh, there was, there was one small thing like, Literally this hose clamp right here, the, the bolt was down here. I rotated it up um, out of the way. And so then you can see there's there's nothing hanging down any lower than that. So that worked out pretty good. So that's the only thing I did is, is I cut all these uh, bolts. I put the washers, the neoprene washers and the... Um, Oh, the nylocks on there and cut those off flush to get those as low as I could. And then I put it in there and man, it, uh, it's lining up pretty good. So instead of, you know, kind of um, the pump still at that point wasn't in, in, in. It was anchored in and it was in position, but it wasn't in, in. So I decided to pull the motor back out and go ahead and make, uh, make that permanent on the intake. So that is today's uh, big achievement is that the pump is now glued in it's bolted in and pretty excited about that one thing about the uh, i don't know what you call this whole housing here obviously there are some bearings in there and water seals there was um on the honda there was this thing um on the inside of that with a hose clamp around it on this uh, on the uh, hydro blaster from RS Racecraft that there's obviously not an extrusion if you will for this thing to go on it's just a cavity in there so I looked at and this thing that the on the back side of this rubber uh, piece this is actually aluminum with just rubber coating on it this is tapered down there and this thing would have honestly probably been sticking out about that actually would have been that way about that far However, the bearings and everything end up here. So I made the decision to just trim this, uh, and that thing was not going in there, to cut all this rubber off. And um, and that, that I couldn't get a hold of Ronnie today, but I'm pretty sure there, there really was no other way of fitting that in there. Um, but I'm pretty sure that that's how that goes in there. And by the time I did that, and then the bolt sucked it up and it's a nice, uh, perfect fit around there i'm probably and that's uh, kind of temporary right now as well until i get some sealant around that um stuff 
So here is the back side of the Honda pump, kind of dark back here, apologize for this. This thing, I, you know, the, the more I work on this Honda, the more I, I kind of like its simplicity. It's just, uh, it went together pretty well. You can see the RS Racecraft uh, adapter. This is the water pickup right there. So that's all, um, well, I'm gonna I'll pull the pump out and drill that so, and then put a through hole on the inside to get the uh, water, the main water supply, but their adapter worked great. Everything fit uh, super back in here. So I'm pretty, pretty excited, pretty happy with the progress today. It's not a huge deal, but so now that, that um, the pump is in there um, and it's gonna, the glue's gonna cure overnight, I can go ahead and, oh, one other thing, when I was trying to fit the engine in the, in the bay here, um, when you look at these these Hondas, what's the best way to do this here? You can kind of see, like, they, the this this brack or the the engine mount is one angle and this one is another angle. I'm pretty sure that these motors actually sit a little bit cockeyed uh, in the jet ski or in the boat. So um, when I was placing it in there, these uh, the longitudinals. The main two engine bears there are 18 inches apart. I had to cut and just trim these just a little bit. I uh, ran them through my bandsaw and took an equal amount off of each side. And it was literally no more than about an eighth of an inch. And then that everything, it dropped right down in between those engine bears. And it gave me a little bit of wiggle room to adjust the, uh, the twist of the engine there. So tomorrow, uh, actually, I think I'm going to go play in that boat again. <laughs> that thing's just way too much fun. Um, by the way, it is for sale. It's a it's a blast. And um, I'm going to, I have that other SHO out back. I'm going to build that one for me. It's going to be the exact same boat. Otherwise, I'd keep that thing for myself. It is just so much fun. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I think I'm trying to decide if I want to work on this tomorrow or it's sunshiny tomorrow. So I might go play in that boat uh, some more. But if I do work, I think I might do a little trade off work on it in the morning. So this thing is ready to plop in and um, get some engine mounts going to to sear the, secure the uh, the thing to the engine bearer. So that would be a, a pretty um, big step in this whole build because as soon as that's done, it, it will go pretty quick. That is always kind of tough to do. But then you just start throwing on the exhaust and throw the exhaust manifold back on, throw the turbos back on. Uh, throw the intake manifold, the air box, start routing the, the wiring harness and all that stuff. And that honestly should go pretty quickly. So pretty exciting and we'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Those are always good uh, for business, if you will. <laughs> we're, we're, we're quickly approaching 400 subscribers. I think everybody really liked that, uh, that jumping video. So that makes me, uh, I got to get a boat that's for myself so I can go beat the holy crap out of it and do some, some fun YouTube kind of stuff. So I've got ideas, stay, uh, stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks again for watching.